Imagine if you were early to TikTok. Imagine if you were early to Instagram. You now have the opportunity to be early to NFTs. And in this video, we're gonna break down exactly why it matters and how you can get involved. So before we dive into tactical ways in which you either as a fan or creator can begin to start leveraging NFTs, I really want to take it a step back and really break down some of the problems that are really prevalent within the music industry, right? Some problems that NFTs can help solve. Number one, the fallacy of a thousand true fans. Maybe you're aware of Kevin Kelly's theory of a thousand true fans. It's built upon the premise that you just need 1,000 true fans in order to build a meaningful career as an artist, as a creative, as a musician. Doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be a superstar, but if you have a thousand people that are true fans and willing to pick up everything that you put down, then you'll be able to earn a meaningful income. Unfortunately, within the current music industry and economics, that's a fallacy. It just doesn't work like that. In order to have an economically viable career as a musician, you oftentimes need tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of fans. So that takes us to our second challenge and second issue that's facing the music industry, which is that there's no middle class in music. You're either a superstar that's generating the vast majority of revenue for the entire industry, or you're a quote unquote starving artist that's, that's struggling to sometimes make ends meet. It's very similar to that of a venture capital investment strategy, a home run strategy, if you will based on the premise that if you make 10 investments or if you're a record label and you sign 10 artists, it's okay if eight or nine of them don't really pan out because you really are taking that, that swing through the fences on the one or two that will return the entire fund back. This takes us to our third problem, which is that music itself has become severely undervalued. The average streaming rates, if you get one stream that's typically equivalent to 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 cents per stream, depending on what platform your music is being streamed upon. That doesn't really make sense. That doesn't seem fair. And just because that is the current reality doesn't mean that it has to be that way. And when you look at these three problems all next to each other, you really start to see how some of the different models within the music industry just are not best suited for the success and prosperity of artists and their fans. And that's where NFTs can come in to help. But before we dive into the tactical use cases of NFTs for the music industry, it's really important to debunk some of the common misconceptions. And one of the most common misconceptions of NFTs is that NFTs are simply a mechanism for speculative investing. Thinking that if I buy this, I'm buying this because I believe it will appreciate in value. And that's why I wanna purchase and hold and potentially sell this NFT down the road. Once we go a layer deeper, we really start to see that NFTs are redefining how creators and musicians are engaging and rewarding and participating with their communities, with their supporters. And that's where the unique utility lies for how musicians can leverage NFTs. When done well, this can actualize the potential of a thousand true fans by drastically increasing the lifetime value of a fan and beyond that, create a deeper sense of ambassadorship and connection amongst fans that are actually NFT collectors. This sounds great in theory, but what does it mean in practice? If I'm a musician, if I'm a fan, how do I actually get involved? I think the best framework to begin with is understanding the two different types of music NFTs. On one side, you have art-driven NFTs, where the merit and the utility of the NFT is really derived from the quality of the art and the credibility of the artist. One of the best ways to think about art-based music NFTs is thinking about collectible music. The same way that I'd listen or purchase a vinyl today to collect music, I may still be streaming it on Spotify, on Apple Music, but I wanted to have that collectible component of the actual music. And if you go a layer deeper, there's two different types of art-based NFTs, right? You have musicians that are releasing their music as NFTs, whether this is music videos or even just the actual song, maybe with the cover art and album cover. The second category is utility-driven NFTs, where through owning the NFT, you're able to access other unique perks. One of the best ways to think about this is a modern day fan club of sorts. What are some specific types of utility that you should consider? Maybe this can be having access to physical goods or exclusive merchandise, discount codes to existing merchandise. Another example is token gated community access. Say for example, you're a musician and you have a discord for your fans, but you wanna have a special channel within your discord for fans that hold your NFT. You can actually token gate or require that they own the token in order to access those channels. Next is being able to surprise and delight your fans and holders with airdrops. Simply because somebody has your NFT and is a collector of your NFT, 
you can send things to their wallet based on the fact that they already have your NFT. So maybe this is new music, other new merchandise, tickets to potential shows. And even though there is a very good set of best practices, by no means is this a one size fits all approach. And I'd really encourage you to think about what do your fans care about? Technology isn't creating new desires, it's really just giving fans a new way to access what they wanted in a more streamlined mechanism. So think about what do your fans want from you? What is unique about you and your fan base and experiences that you can create uniquely for your fans? So one of the best ways to make this tactical is to dive into some specific examples. As mentioned, you shouldn't necessarily take a copy and paste approach. And part of the fact that there's so much white space and that there is no one size fits all approach here is a blessing of the space because it gives you an opportunity to trailblaze and set a precedent for how musicians can leverage NFTs going forward. With that said, these are what we'd consider to be some best in class examples that are showcasing how musicians can leverage and unleash the potential of NFTs. For starters, we're gonna dive into Steve Aoki's Aokiverse NFT project. This is a fantastic example of a utility-based NFT. For Steve Aoki, when he released his Aokiverse project, he came up with a list of perks that he'd give to his fans and people that are holders of his NFTs. If you're an Aokiverse NFT holder, you'll get exclusive pre-sale access, free mints, and more to Aoki NFT releases and partner drops. You can get free Steve Aoki tour tickets to hundreds of dates worldwide, digital and physical collectibles, free apparel, wearables, and exclusive access to collabs with some of the world's most iconic IP, token-gated access to Aokiverse-only events, such as an event that they recently hosted in LA, virtual metaverse performances, and much, much more. The best way to think about this, and what he did really well, was that he was super serving his super fans. When you're releasing an NFT project, the goal isn't to try and convert and cater to anybody that's familiar with you, it's really to serve the people that are at the bottom of your funnel. When you're looking at a marketing funnel, at the top of this funnel, you have people that may have heard of you, may have streamed a song or two, may have followed you on Instagram. If you go to the middle of your funnel, this is, these are people that may have saved your songs in their playlist, actively engaged with your content. If you have an email newsletter, maybe they've subscribed. At the bottom of the funnel, these are people, these are your true fans. These are the people that are coming to all of your shows that are listening to every single song that you drop. The next example was the collaborative drop between Masego, FKJ, and Voids on the Tezos-based NFT platform, OneOf. They did a fantastic job brainstorming different utility, and this was also a great example of a musician, in this case, two musicians, that partnered with a very, very cool visual artist, Voids, to help bring some of the music to life through this visual art component. What really stood out about this drop, given that it is also a very utility-based drop, was all the different perks that they gave for fans. Once again, reiterating how they were super serving their super fans. They had a broad range of perks based on the tier of NFT you purchased and the potential sweepstakes that you were entered into as a result of purchasing the NFT. It ranged all the way from getting a signed guitar by FKJ to actually getting the platinum plaque of the record to Dow, all time classic. Da -da! To doing virtual jam sessions with Masego, getting song feedback from Masego, what was also cool was if you were an actual music producer, through purchasing the NFT, you were actually able to get the stems of the song, so that way you could participate in a remix competition to earn even additional feedback and additional perks with Masego and FKJ. This is a fantastic example of artists partnering with the visual artists, of coming up with creative ways to bring a song from catalog back to life, and most importantly, coming up with very unique, memorable experiences for fans, with NFTs merely being the conduit to experiencing those different parts. Another really fascinating example is what Royal is doing. Royal is giving people an opportunity to actually invest in artists, and through purchasing the NFT, you're actually able to get a stake of the royalties generated across traditional streaming platforms as a holder of that NFT. As a fan, now your understanding of culture can actually have some level of financial appreciation. Even if you don't follow the public stock markets, if you're a big fan and early fan of an artist that you love and you have one of their first NFTs before they blow up, now your fandom can appreciate as well. And even think about what this means from an artist's perspective. Now you really know who your fans are and you can come up with unique experiences for your earliest supporters. It is worth mentioning that a lot of those projects that I just ran through are for bigger and more established artists. Yet there still are lots of different success stories of smaller, more emerging artists that have been able to leverage this technology 
to help give their career a jump start and inject far more capital than an artist in an early stage in their career would typically get within the current music industry economics. One fantastic example of this is the Chicago musician Ibn Inglor. Ibn was able to effectively crowdfund a $92,000 advance on his forthcoming project Danger Zone. Early backers and supporters of this project are actually able to get a percentage of the royalties generated, similar to the model that we just spoke through with Royal. In the words of Ibn Inglor, my goal is to eliminate the need for major record labels by distributing a total of 40% in mechanical royalties to top backers as a way to keep the control of the music within the community and myself. What makes that so exciting is that this starts to remove some of this notion of gatekeepers within the music industry. Through nurturing and having a better mechanism to monetize and generate income and support from your fans, you don't need to go through as many hoops. You don't need to have gatekeepers at major labels help provide this jumpstart to your career because you can build it upon the foundation of your own community. That doesn't mean record labels won't be helpful. And I think lots of record labels are evolving and are adapting to learn how to service artists and help them understand this technology. But even in the instance of other artists that are at the forefront of Web3 music, being able to go to a record label and show that you've built up all of this traction, that you have this big base of collectors, will give you significantly more leverage in coming up with a deal structure that best suits your needs without having to sign away ownership of your music and make sure that you aren't getting shelved and that you are actually able to dictate a lot of your own terms as you do sign a record deal with any sort of major label. In the description, we're gonna put down a list of different people and accounts that you should follow, as well as some other resources. The last thing is that if you haven't actually gone about purchasing your first NFT, I heavily encourage that you actually go through the process and go through the journey of collecting and purchasing your first music NFT. Simply going through this exercise will teach you a lot. You'll learn about the process and you'll also understand what it really feels like to have the sense of digital ownership. If you haven't already, we have a video on how to set up your MetaMask wallet and buy your first NFT. I see this much more similar to the impact that social media had as far as how it redefined how artists went about growing and engaging their communities. NFTs are an entirely new paradigm. The rules are still being written. So there's a massive opportunity for you to be at the forefront of this movement in showcasing how you as an artist can build a more prosperous career and create new experiences to drive a stronger connection and stronger set of ambassadorship amongst your fans. I hope this was super helpful. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the video. Sign up for our newsletter, nftnow.com. We distill everything that's happening in the wonderful world of NFTs straight to your inbox once each week. Happy cooking, happy minting. Now go have some fun with your music NFTs. We'll see you later.